Pokemon ship first, then we'll do a uh, new generations video. So let me close out the Vanguard. Okay. So yeah, bro, this shit's so fucking stupid. So let's see. Krillix with the fire, bro. The internet's dry as fuck right now. Trying to find topics to make a video on. You can't find anything that isn't quantum TV. Yeah, I agree, man. It's boring as fuck. I've tried to make a video, but I may just have to do like some fucking uh, Elden Ring shit, I guess. I don't know. I'm like coming up dry on topics. So a couple days ago, Bloomsburg posted an article talking about some rumored changes to revenue that Twitch is planning about behind the scenes to potentially release this summer, which basically boils down to creators getting more money from Twitch ads, but less money from Twitch subscriptions. A bunch of- <laughs> Oh shit. Dude, they're really taking more money from subscriptions? Did I hear that right? Creators getting more money from Twitch ads, but less money from Twitch subscriptions. Oh, God, dude, really? Who the fuck would want to stream on Twitch at this point? Like, subs is where you get all your money on Twitch. Ad revenue on Twitch is, like, fucking garbage. Absolute fucking garbage, bro. Like, I, when I streamed on Twitch, I probably made about $20 total from ad revenue. And I had, like, an average stream of, like, 400 people. Like, a YouTube stream, I get about $70 in ad revenue. But fucking Twitch, bro, I was lucky to get, like, 40 bucks in, like, four months. All the money from Twitch was fucking subscriptions. That was it. If you didn't get subs on Twitch, you were not making money. That is so fucking cheeks. A bunch of Twitch streamers objected to this idea on Twitter, one of which being Pokimane who tweeted out, In my opinion, Twitch should just implement ads that don't directly interfere with a stream. Side <laughs> what type of fuck? Yeah, guys. Twitch should just implement ads that don't directly interfere with a stream, a.k.a. Yeah, just put ads on Twitch that nobody fucking looks at because advertisers will really want to pay for that shit, right? Sidebar picture in picture underlay. Because, you know, how many ads do you all look at when you go on a website and you're like, damn, man, I really want to click that ad versus reading or watching whatever I actually fucking care about. I mean, it's like whenever you get like an ad in your Instagram feed, you just scroll right fucking past it. Nobody cares about that shit. But when you have a YouTube ad that pops up in front of a video you want to watch, you have to fucking sit through it. So, this is a dumbass fucking take. I bar picture in picture overlay, etc. I understand advertisers are essential to make a platform profitable, but intervening with the viewer's experience isn't how they should go about it. Linus Tech Tips then responded to her by saying, Those ads are barely profitable for a text-based site. They've been pretty much worthless since 2010. Unless you can pretty much guarantee the viewer can't ignore it, it does nothing for the advertiser. So why would they pay for it? Exactly. Linus then elaborates on these thoughts two days later on his WAN show podcast, which Pokemon then reacts to on her Twitch stream. Since it's pretty much played in full over there, I will just show you her perspective of watching what Linus said and her reaction to it. I didn't. Can someone TLDR? Or actually, maybe I could find it. I saw a really terrible <laughs> take from a Twitch creator that was like, Twitch should just have oh, ads dude. that are totally non-intrusive. Like, to the viewer. <laughs> the fucking, um, accent there is spot fucking on. Like, their ads should just, like, not be intrusive. And I was looking at it going... You know, this feels like that whole thing. Remember when there was the big controversy on YouTube? Dude, I fucking hate when people do this shit. Like, they sharpie all over their fucking hand. What are we, back in, like, middle school? Where they... 
uh, basically started enforcing like ad uh, advertiser friendly guidelines on videos and it was affecting mm. the rate at which you could get monetization and you had this this whole outrage from especially certain corners of YouTube that created very non advertiser friendly content and my take at the time I felt like was very controversial and not received very well where I basically said well yeah did you expect was going to happen at some point there was going to be a reckoning where advertisers were not going to want you, you guys don't understand you don't work with like national and international brands they are extremely conservative when it comes to and obviously not all their exceptions but they are extremely conservative when it comes to the associations between their brand and other things and so i feel like this is another one of those situations where i'm going to come in and i'm going to say well yeah what what did you think was going to happen do you have any idea how much twitch costs to run and do you... Yeah, but at the same time, Amazon can fucking afford it. Do you think that banner, like static banner ads on a website are going to pay for it? <laughs> yeah, that is true. Like, nobody fucking pays attention to banner ads. Like, that shit might as well be blank because no one fucking gives a damn about them. <laughs> I promise you, I give you my personal Linus Tech Tips guarantee that un intrusive ads are not going to pay for a site like Twitch no matter how many of them they plastered on the page. Unintrusive ads don't pay for the forum. Because <laughs> because no advertiser is going to pay for an unintrusive ad because they don't work because they don't call your attention away. Yeah, exactly. It would be like literally advertising. It All right, this is a perfect example. It's like literally say you're advertising in like a fucking comic book, for example. Are you going to put your ad after the end of the fucking comic book? Or are you going to put it like in the middle of it? Or at the very beginning, right before people start reading it? It's always going to be in a place that like is right in the view of the reader, for example. They're not going to put it at the end after you're already fucking done and don't give a shit about it anymore. Or like if you're watching a TV show... Are they going to wait and play all the ads until after the episode's over? Fuck no. They're going to drop them right in the middle, so you got to watch them in order to keep watching the TV show. <laughs> like, no advertiser is going to want you to go, like, out of your way to be able to, like, fucking find their ad. Like, they want to make sure that shit is plastered in front of you, front and center. And no one's going to pay attention to, like, fucking banner ads. But the simple fact is, is Twitch should not be taking that large of a cut from subscriptions. That shit's fucking ridiculous. Like, a 70-30 split for subscriptions is already pretty shitty. Like, not gonna lie, but a fucking 50-50 split? That's terrible, bro. That's really fucking bad. Like, people are basically gonna be losing, what, 33% of their, like, subscription revenue? from Twitch. That's awful. Overnight. For no fucking reason other than Amazon wants more money. I don't know. Twitch is a massive fucking L. Return it to full with the two. Also, the sexy Coco I was playing couldn't super chat. Yeah, we'll do it. Don't worry. We'll get to it. And send the mammoth with the two based Linus? I'm guessing so, man. Linus has had some base takes recently. The Butch is toxic with the five. The stuff on Pokemon's arm is called henna. I doubt it's real henna. She probably used a marker. I don't know what the fuck that is, bro. All I know is that shit looks mad fucking corny. Obviously. My, my. No offense. No offense. Whoever does not understand how web advertising works, even though it's like how they actually make a living. Sorry, I'm doing a job. Oh, you didn't talk about the cargo, uh, the, the, the revenue, the red split. Oh, yeah, they didn't. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter if they're losing money on a 50 50 red split. If everyone else is still doing 70 30, then they're completely screwed. As for having creators push more ads, um, yeah, I mean, that's um, that, that's just normal. That just needs to happen because banner ads, no, are not going to do it. Sorry, nameless um, creator. And probably more than one creator. I don't even think that's a controversial take in that community because there were like tens of thousands of upvotes on this super big brain idea that ads should just not disrupt the user at all. Like, oh, man. Oh, man. Ew, is she wearing a fucking Kith t shirt? Okay, I think. That's a fucking L. I think it's really odd because clearly they're talking about me. And if you're going to talk about a tweet that I made, why do you need to say nameless creator? Because they're not trying to go hashtag shots fired or maybe because you have a history of striking down videos. 
just just say my name. People are going to figure it out anyways. And so they may not be trying to give you any free press. Secondly, I saw a really terrible take from a Twitch creator that was like, Twitch should just have ads that are totally non-intrusive. Like, to the viewer. Like, their ads should just, like, not... But the fact that she thinks it's about her just tells you that she's the fucking guilty party. Like, it always has to be about her, bro. There's probably, like, a hundred fucking Twitch streamers that said some dumb shit like that. ...be intrusive. And I was like... And wh why are you using that voice when quoting me? To be <laughs> because it's fucking accurate. Completely honest, it's just really hurtful to see because... Bro, why are you using that accent when quoting me? Proceeds to speak in that fucking accent. Hmm. I wonder why. I mean, Linus is someone that I really respect. I respect all the content he's made on YouTube. But also, even in regards to the points that they make, I understand that banner ads and other types of advertising that are less intrusive are perhaps not as effective. But that doesn't discount my initial point, which is that... Yeah, it does. That, at least in my opinion, really, really terrible ad systems will impact whether or not people want to use Twitch way more than the profit split that a user gets. Also... Um, not true. Bro, YouTube literally has way more ads than... Well, no, actually, Twitch has worse ads than YouTube. Because Twitch ads, you can't even fucking skip half the time. I don't know, man. If Google can do it, Amazon can fucking do it. So people love to talk about 50-50 sub revenue on Twitch, but oh my god, it's 70-30 on YouTube. YouTube makes the large majority of their money off ads. So... What does that tell you, though? YouTube can operate a streaming platform that's larger than Twitch based off of the ads that play in front of a live stream. Whereas Twitch literally does the exact same business model where they play ads in front of a live stream that you can't even fucking skip. And on top of that, they literally have a feature that allows you to run ads in the middle of your stream as well. And they still can't run it off of fucking ad revenue. <laughs> like the fuck I don't really know how the fuck that like is a point I mean the thing is too it's like Twitch has always taken thir or yeah 30% now overnight they're upping it to 50 like yeah it may not affect you Pokimane because you know you don't really give a fuck how much money in subs you make in a month because you have a bunch of sponsors and shit okay whatever but for everybody else that streams on Twitch, they're losing 30% of their monthly income for no fucking reason other than Twitch is being greedy little fucking shits. Plain and simple. Like, yeah, you may not be affected that much by it, but let's say somebody is like working... I shouldn't even say fucking working, but live streaming and that's their job. They make 8,000 bucks a month. They're able to live off of that shit and support their fucking family from it. Now, all of a sudden they're going to be making what? Like 5,500 a month just overnight for no fucking reason. Even though they have the same amount of subs, they get the same amount of viewership. They're getting the same amount of people coming to their streams every single fucking day. But now, all of a sudden, the money that people are paying to watch those persons, like, streams and support them is going less to them and more to Twitch. You don't see an issue with that, huh? I don't know, bro. It's just really fucking stupid. Not off of their subscription model, so obviously it's easier for them to be a little more lenient in that regards. I think it's just insane that people who are trying to like show they have a leg up business wise in comparison to my silly Twitter wham and take. I mean, your words, not mine. Like there are so many other facets that you guys are missing out on, especially the fact that, you know, <laughs> what the fuck is she talking about? Like, is she really out here acting like she made a 500 IQ argument here? You know what? Even if Twitch only did 50 50 models. Um, for subscriptions, live streaming on YouTube for any small creator is near impossible. You no, it's not. Don't see thousands of people making a living at a hundred to a thousand viewers on YouTube like you do. On 
Uh, yes, you do. On Twitch. So, no. You 100% do. Like, bro, aren't, isn't that, like, I show speed guy, like, literally the biggest fucking streamer at the moment? Like, across all platforms, and he's on YouTube. He grew his channel on YouTube, not Twitch. Yeah. that That's kind of the past, buddy. Yeah, Pokemon, that, that may have been true in, like, 2014, but not these days. YouTube's pretty fucking big. Oh, I don't think it's going to kill it. I do think that both of those those changes in conjunction are not great. But at the end of the day, my point was not, like... <laughs> My point was not that intrusive ads suck. I'm just saying like maybe that's not the way to go about it. So how about you just take my point for what it is, a decent one that is true. <laughs> Dude. She literally can't accept the fact that she had a shit take. She's like, "Why don't you just accept my fa like my uh take for what it is?" Um hold up. Let let's just replay it. My point was not that intrusive ads suck. I'm just saying, like, maybe that's not the way to go about it. So how about you just take my point for what it is, a decent one that is true on behalf of about every single user that watches live streams. Oh, now now she speaks for everyone, man. She she speaks for every single person who watches live streams. You know, we should only take Pokemane's takes as this, like, fucking truth for every single person on the fucking internet. And instead, suggest... Because, you know, now what people are going to fucking do is <laughs> now that their sub revenue is low, they're just going to spam the fuck out of ad breaks every single time. <laughs> there's like a fucking... um. Every time there's like a dead moment in their stream, like, oh, we're in between matches, time for an ad. Like, that's what's going to happen now. Oh my god, bro, I don't fucking know. So Midnight Mall Wild with the two, I feel weird. I have a HyperX Cloud too as well. Eh? I think she's like sponsored by him or some shit. Zora with the five. Yes, please forgive us, Pokemon. As we press X to down on your shit. Am I right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, Pokemon's making me glad that I'm using some fucking razor headphones, man. Let's go, real gamer shit. I want to get some Astros though. As soon as I can pay off my credit card which is already very, very high. I think I may buy some A50s. Like, low-key, I've really been wanting them. I don't know. This is, like, the most comfortable pair of headphones I've ever used. Like, I've been using these Razer ones for, like, a year or two at this point, and they're pretty nice. But, you know, I need something a little, a little more gaming, if that makes sense. So, let's see. Sora with the 5 yes, please forgive us, Pokemon, as we press X to down on your shit. Am I right, girl? Yeah, definitely, man. She is, like, so full of shit. She, like, thinks, bro, like, I don't know. I just think Pokemon is incredibly stupid, but at the same time, she has a good business sense, I guess. I don't know. But not when it comes to shit like this. I mean, like, building a fucking audience. She doesn't have business sense in the sense that she understands how businesses work. She has good business sense in a sense that she knows how to market herself, I guess. I don't know. You're in debt? No, it's just my credit card's maxed out and I refuse to pay it off early. Never give people money before you have to. Uh, Oski Oski with the two and just like the last one he got on all fours. Oh, really? I didn't actually watch like all of this. I hope he didn't fucking apologize or like offer to build her a PC or some bullshit like that. Yeah, I'm a gamer. And Blake Jones with the three Amazon getting their money up. Guess so. You know, it's a nice increase in revenue for them. That's for fucking sure. So, Saber Room with the two dumb thought. Gotta say dumb thought things. I mean, I guess. I don't know. 
I wouldn't really classify Pokimane as a thought, to be completely honest. She does, like, that whole fucking uwu anime bullshit. Like, oh, I'm just the girl next door type bullshit. I don't know. I wouldn't really classify her as a Twitch thought. She's more like a fucking, like, weeb cock tease. <laughs> Which, maybe that's worse than a fucking thought. I don't know. SNK nostalgia with the two, and I thought Olivia Rodriguez was dumb. Who the fuck is that? Is she, like, another Twitch streamer? Midnight Mawile with the five. She can't understand. It's because of everybody. She makes easy millions a year, so she doesn't care losing a bit and fucking it up for everybody. Yeah, exactly. It's like she doesn't understand the fact that, yeah, Twitch streamers are going to get fucked in the ass by this change. So Caleb Martin with D2, she uses ad blockers. Yeah, not surprising. <laughs> not fucking surprising. The Butch is Toxic with the two. I have the Turtle Beach Elite headset. I liked Turtle Beaches, but the thing where it like echoed your voice really pissed me off. And I could never figure out how to turn it off. God Howard with the two. I use HyperX Cloud 2. They're great. Yeah, I've heard good things about HyperX. I've never owned a pair, though. Blazing Devilify with the two. Gamers? Yeah, I'm a gamer! And I've been chiefing with the two. Pokemon is the Hillary Clinton of streaming. Yeah, just breaking through those glass ceilings 100%. An alternative that maybe isn't banner ads? I don't know. Anyways, not only you that has tweeted that, yes, but Mega they... Megasoy tipped $2. Oh, Linus cancelled for misogynism now. Oh, yeah, let me just explain. Oh, dude, cancelled for misogyny. Uh-oh, how will Linus ever recover? Yes, a lot of people did tweet that. However, I'm just taking context clues, which is one. Just have oh, ads dude. that are totally non-intrusive, like to the viewer, oh. like their ads. The voice that he uses, and two, he said nameless creator. And I mean, you guys saw the tweet that I made. It was like 50k likes. I don't know. Bitch, because he's not going to give you free promo. You are not in poor tent. You are literally fucking bottom of the barrel i'm lonely so i want to watch a girl play video games type fucking content that is what you are <laughs> like you're not some intellectual powerhouse or insightful person like i i just don't understand why she thinks like people need to go like oh this this was pokemon bro like and then she'd probably be pissed that he fucking name dropped her if she did if he did do that shit She'd probably be like, oh my god, he's sending people to fucking harass me for my take. So either way, it's a no-win scenario. I don't know if many other creators, like large-scale creators, spoke about this particular issue. But it just makes me sad because, like, I don't know, this is someone that... It just makes me sad, guys. I'm gonna pretend to fucking cry. I thought was really cool. I'm so uwu cute. And for them to speak about my opinion which only comes from the perspective of a, a viewer and someone who knows how annoyed other viewers are by the current ad system and who was simply suggesting an alternative instead he kind of just like yeah those ads are barely profitable for a text-based site they've been pretty much worthless since 2010 unless you can pretty much guarantee the viewer can't ignore it it does nothing for the advertiser so why would they pay for it I think this is a fine take. I just, why did they have to say it the way that they did? Nameless. Oh my God, they didn't have to be so mean. Creator. It's just hurtful to be honest. And yes, I'll go back. Oh, it's hurtful. Oh my God. Dude, Pokemon was hurt by that, guys. We got to rise up and defend our like favorite gamer girl over here. Her feelings were hurt. To the trial, but I did want to talk about this on the off chance that he sees it and maybe understands that the way he talks about other creators opinions can indeed be hurtful especially when someone is just tweeting something as like is just tweeting something as harmless as hey maybe the current ad system is pissing people off more than it should if we want to make sure that this is a good viewer experience that's all but yeah. Oh, she's sniffling. She's about to cry, man. 
I would have very much preferred if maybe they gave an alternative instead of being like, this is the ad system that needs to occur. Which like, okay, maybe it is. But at the end of the day, you still can't deny that it interferes with, at its core, the magic of live streaming. And even if you're going to disagree with my opinion, I think your take was fair, and the way they spoke on it was insensitive. Sorry, you have to deal with that. <laughs> what the fuck? I just wish they... They were rude for no reason. They weren't. Maybe we need alternatives. That can never be a bad take. What the fuck? as rude or hurtful about it man damn it I was, I was reading the fucking simp chat bro i was just watching a linus video the other day that he made about oh my god i was such a big fan i think the tesla y model and i was like oh my god this video is shot so well Tell me you didn't fucking watch a YouTube video without telling me you didn't watch a YouTube video. And then I just see him talking about me like that. Damn. That's, that's sad. <laughs> I think it wasn't meant hurtful. I think it's really hard for me to hear someone mock. Hey, yo, Virginia gang reppin', let's go. My voice like that. And then titties out also refuse to say my name when very clearly talking about me and not be hurt by that maybe bro she needs to wash that ugly ass shit off her fucking hand that stuff is nasty looking i don't know every time i see it it just kind of pisses me off it wasn't meant to be i'm just saying how i feel because you know i can't assume someone's intention and if he came out and he was like oh i didn't think much of it and i didn't mean to be hurtful then maybe bro, it literally looks like she took like a fucking like magic marker like the fucking middle school girls used to, or not even middle school, but like fucking fourth or fifth grade like girls used to do and like draw all over their fucking hands. Like this shit looks so corny. And maybe he didn't say my name because um, he didn't want people attacking me for it. I'm not really. Or he didn't want to give you fucking free promo, but yeah, there we go. Sure. But my the impression I'm getting is not a positive one and it for sure doesn't feel well. Okay, wait, one last thing. Do you guys think it's weird if I just reply to Linus on Twitter? I think that's better than just saying stuff on stream or whatever. Because at least then I'm being direct. And maybe he'll take my feedback to heart and it'll be good. Right? So right after her stream, she did end up making a Twitter response to Linus. In it, she says, Hey, just saw a clip where you discussed my tweet on your podcast. Wanted to let you know that I felt the way you read my tweet in a mocking tone, plus referred to me as a nameless creator, albeit also replying to this tweet, was odd and oh, hurtful. As your Bro, did she type like a fucking uh, essay and like screenshot it and put it on Twitter? Jesus Christ. To read, I understand that less aggressive forms of advertising aren't as profitable, but that doesn't mean the current system is the best one. In my opinion, further interrupting the essence of what makes streaming special, aka live interaction, is more detrimental to Twitch than 50-50 split instead of 70-30. I also think it would have been more productive to suggest alternatives instead of just putting down my opinion. For example, a rewind button that allows you to view the portion of content you missed during an ad break, or promoting Twitch Turbo, making it cheaper, adding more perks to it etc secondly i saw you guys compare why would they make twitch turbo cheaper when they're literally trying to get more money <laughs> okay compare twitch and youtube subscription splits a lot while lacking quite a bit of context for example ad rates and cpm on twitch are far better than youtube gaming even if youtube gives streamers that is completely fucking false ad rates are not better on twitch than fucking youtube what is she smoking a better split on subscriptions, which they can afford to because they are primarily a VOD platform. So in reality, the potential profit is smaller, if not still better on Twitch, because it's easier for smaller streamers to make a living on Twitch than YouTube, which caters far more to established streamers. I've known of you and admired your channel slash content for a long time, so I wanted to express this directly to you, instead of just holding on to the bad impression I got from the clip I saw. Wish you the best. Linus then responds in a long chain of continuous tweets. He says, thanks for the the 
reply. I underestimated the internet's ability to put two and two together on this one. Maybe some of my frustration at how difficult it is to build a sustainable online streaming service came through. So here I think he's saying we have conversations on the regular, but he spelled it T-R-G-U-L-S-R. -S -S That's a really weird misspelling. Maybe it's another word that I don't know of or an alternative spelling to <laughs> The fuck? regular that some people use but but regardless what i think he's saying is we have conversations on the regular with creators who take for granted the free nature of online video platforms while also not appearing to understand how they come to be free i didn't seek any drama which is why i didn't name you not because you were nameless i don't find time to watch streams but i have followed your career for years as i consider you one of the truly business-minded online creators May uh oh Yo, is Linus trying to slide, bro? Maybe I was also kind of disappointed in the way it felt your take was aimed at stirring up anger towards Twitch about a situation I know from first-hand experience they probably have no power to fix. It's an engineering marvel that Twitch functions at all, and at a 50-50 split even. I'd be amazed if they could keep the lights on without consistent cash infusions from Amazon. At the end of the day, creators need to do what works best for them, which might involve milking whichever platform has the most VC funding juice driving it. But I also wish there could be an attitude adjustment where we built towards a more sustainable ecosystem in the longer term. Platforms use the word partner a lot, but I think both sides could be better partners. As for the valley girl voice, it had nothing to do with you. You don't sound like that. If anything, it's an acknowledgement- Yo, now he's straight up fucking lying, bro. ...that when I'm not scripted, I tend to sound like that. It's not personal, but it was rude. I'm sorry about that. As a Oh my god, bro, it does sound like her way of apologizing, if you were interested in exploring your newfound multi-platform freedom, we had spent considerable development resources on multi-streaming, and could help point you and your team in the right direction. It's not much, but I don't want any bad blood. I believe in transparency. I would. So I'd I want all the smoke, bro. I prefer to leave the episode unedited, but I'll make sure my team doesn't clip it, and I'll remove the original reply to this. Should be. A little tougher to track down. Followed if you want to talk further. Pokemon then responds, Appreciate the kind reply, apology, and elaborating on your points. I could see how my tweet could seem misinformed, but I was just being short. I'm also someone who's typically more biased towards Twitch, so stirring up anger is far from my MO. We'll DM- <laughs> Yo, what? That's fucking cat, bro to continue convo. And that's about it for the public discussion between Linus and Pokimane. Doesn't seem like it evolved into a shit shit. Dude, even her profile picture pisses me off. Like, look at that shit, bro. That is so fucking corny. Like, ooh, ooh, I'm so cute. Oh my god. Yeah, that's some simp shit. Hitting her with the fucking smiley face. Bruh. Hell nah. Tier 3 sub detected, boys. <laughs> Sand the Mammoth with the two. You dunce. Yo, I need to clip that still. It's motion with the two. What's she crying about now? Well, hopefully your question was answered. And sore with the two. We all agree. She needs to keep that same energy. Agreed. Fuck, I have, like, the hiccups. Hopefully this shit doesn't last. Oski Waski with the two, like I said, all fours. They all fall eventually. Yeah, bro, I don't I don't understand why people are, like, so quick to, like, fucking bow down to Pokimane. People just need to say fucker. Yeah, I'm a gamer! I don't know, man. I consider the fact that, like, Pokimane's pissed off at you as, like, a fucking W. You should wear that as, like, a Medal of Honor. DJ Aftershock with the two, I hope that apology was not sincere. Yeah, I, it, might, it wasn't really even like an apology. It was more just like, yeah, whatever, it was rude. But I wouldn't even give her that much, bro. She cannot, she literally cannot stand when anyone talks about her. It's actually sad. And Sam the Madman with the two, Pokey is normal from, wait, Pokey is normal from Garfield IRL? Bro, I have no idea what that is. Like, I know what Garfield is, but what do you mean normal? I don't know. She's just, like, the epitome of that, like, ha ha, I'm just a girl that plays video games that, you know. Dude, it's so, uh, I hate that type of shit. The gamer girl fucking stereotype, basically. 
That's about it for the public discussion between Linus and Pokimane. Doesn't seem like it evolved into a shit show like most of these dramas tend to do, but I thought the general topic of discussion, as well as Linus's and Pokimane's reactions to each other, were interesting enough to warrant the creation of this video. Anyways, with all that being said, if you have any additional thoughts about this drama, I would love to hear it in the comment section below. We can also discuss things over on my Twitter, or if you want some more direct interaction with me, you can follow my Twitch page to catch when I go live over there. All right, so you generation, we will do your video now. Let me get it real quick. So why are there degenerates in anime? Jesus Christ, bro. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Hate thoughts archive. <laughs> Hold What's up. up, you stud muffins? Welcome to the video. Um, so, probably a lot of you aren't on Twitter, but if you are on Twitter or Facebook or <laughs> anywhere you have interaction this is. with people where they can put like a custom profile picture or a banner or have interactions, I would have to say, and we'd all have to agree here, that 90%, because not all, nothing's absolute, but I'm going to say 80, 90% of people who have an anime profile picture or like a banner or on Twitter, like retweet anime are degenerate clout chasing edge Lord wannabe low IQ losers. Th that's all there. I mean, that is kind of factual is to it. Like the anime profile picture is like the definitive, like confirmation that somebody is probably fucking stupid. Honestly, have you ever had an interaction with somebody who has an anime banner or in anime or manga or whatever? The hell? I don't know any other. That's all I know. Anime, manga. That's the only thing I know because, as you can see, uh, I'm, I'm a stud muffin MLG gaming stud champion alpha male who wouldn't, like, come on. Like, anime? Like, well, oh, me, oh, senpai, oh, what you doing? <laughs> it's so fucking true, bro. It's so weird. Rest in peace, all press work. Can't believe he died. Um are degenerate losers like i'm sorry i mean like it's just a fact like they think it is a fact they have the dumbest takes on things they're like the most just I, I, i'm just gonna say i don't know I'm, not, I'm just gonna say i wonder if anime like does anime attract people with who are on the spectrum for autism yo funny that he mentions that The BBC is of the same mind. Why do autistic people really love manga? It's not just you, my friend. It's many others. Not even a joke. Even the official fucking British Broadcast Network, or whatever the fuck it's called. Like, if that's the case, then, then I, I give you a pass. It's not your fault that you have mental mental health issues or have, uh, you know, developmental issues or a genetic disorder. Because I think that must be what it was. It is. I think people who like anime, especially like people who in the Western culture, you know, honky crackers, you know, people like that. Um, even African Americans get down with anime. But like anime, like this kind of stuff, like the Japanese, like oh, no, 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 anime stuff. Um, I'd have to say probably <laughs> it tracks a large proportion of people who are on the spectrum or have mental health problems or cognitive disorders or just things that are out of their control. So now that I'm saying this video, it's coming like I'm making a clicking in my brain. So if you see somebody, and this is a public service announcement right here on this channel. <laughs> if you see somebody with an anime profile picture or you see them respond to you in any way that just seems like this is ridiculous and you feel like this person's out to lunch, just go to their profile, go to their channel and check and see if they're retweeting anime or what, anime, like and whatever that weird crap is. Anything with like Japanese anime and if you see that, then you got to realize you're dealing with a degenerate loser or somebody who has cognitive issues, mental problems, you know, developmental issues. And it will, it, it'll just, you know, it's like you're not going to sit there and argue with somebody with Down syndrome. Really, right? Like, of course not. <laughs> Fair point. They're, it's not their fault that they were born that way. You know, they're not missing, they're missing a chromosome. It's not their fault. Like, you know, you should have pity on them. So this is not only a video for uh, me to, to rant but I think it's a video of enlightenment where I've learned something. I think I've taught you guys something that people who have anime profile pictures, banners, as well as like retweeting in the anime, 80 to 90% of them probably are missing a chromosome 
or too many chromosomes or you know had some kind of horrible life experience that has led them down a path or they have cognitive issues or they're on the spectrum of autism or Asperger's <laughs> or something I think that is what we learned here today on this video I mean I'm, I'm ranting I'm teaching I'm learning all at the same time it's amazing <laughs> So just to reiterate my point, 89% of people who have anime profile banner pictures, all that kind of stuff, love anime, are mentally challenged. And we should just leave them alone and not even interact with them. <sighs> what a solid video. I'm going to get out of here. I mean, that's not the best angle. There's a better angle. All right. Now, look at that. I've been doing planking, working out, getting jacked. Hope you guys have a good one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, smash that like button. And last but not least, and most importantly, stay black, question authority, and don't let the honk or cracker or shapeshifter bring you down. Peace out. Be ya. I would say that's a pretty factual YouTube video. I don't know, man. Would you actually argue with someone if they have Down syndrome? I don't think so. You know, that brings up a very interesting point. I don't know. But yeah, you generation, we will now watch your wonderful degenerate crap that you were recommending for God Howard. I'm sure. But yeah, let's watch Why Are There Degenerates in Anime? Check out today's work of fan art. We've got time. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Yo, what the fuck is this shit? Oh my god, that's terrible. Bruh. Oh, somebody actually spent time drawing that. Uh, you generation with the two, are we watching this first? Not the right. Yeah, I know it's not the right video. We're watching the shit now. Smoke show with the two, finally a good video about anime that was gold. Facts, man. Tamamo no Mae, clinging to a girl named Giallo. I always enjoy when 2D characters are placed into real life locations. It brings the piece to life in a rather charming way. <laughs> And it makes me think about my dream that one day anime girls might exist. Thank you so much, Leo Hockberg. Oh my god, bro. Welcome. Yo, I guarantee you the person who drew that fucking picture is probably one of the motherfuckers that have in like their Twitter like Twitter bio. Oh my god, guys, commissions are open. Make sure to commission me to draw your favorite anime characters, <laughs> and then they deliver some shit like that. Come back to Otaku Daikun. Die here. For today's video, I thought it would be fun to look into a trope that I find is incredibly relevant in both older and modern anime. That is, the degenerate. Whether you've acknowledged this trope by- Did he look in the mirror? ...by name or not? If you've even watched a handful of anime, you've no doubt- Bro, this is literally the motherfucker that defended, like, child porn in anime. <laughs> like, bro, if you're looking for degeneracy in anime, look no further than yourself. ...come across one of these characters. These are the guys, and occasional girls, who exist to contextualize an anime's fan service. They often vocalize the fan service, being there to narrate and emphasize a character's attractive appeal. The fan service we see from such anime tend to be from that degenerate's Oh my god, dude, that's so fucking funny. Ha ha ha, she slapped him and kicked him, ha. Perspective. It is from their leering eyes that we voyeuristically experience fan service scenes. More often than not, they also play a hand in facilitating the fan service, creating risque circumstances through meddling or influence. I think this goes without saying, but obviously, if you're not the type of person who likes fan service, you likely won't appreciate these characters either. I'm not so much here to defend any stance on the topic, as much as I'm hoping to deconstruct this tropic character type. I want to understand how they did. Dude, I cannot fucking stand these people. Today we're gonna ana we're gonna analyze the um deep whatever rooted meaning in whatever fucking anime bolt like dude it's literally cartoons. Why are these motherfuckers analyzing this shit so fucking much? Degenerate works and why they exist in the first place. Thus, I'll be choosing a handful of examples, culminating in an analysis. Of this is like the motherfuckers that'll watch like Finding Nemo and be like, well, actually, it's an allegory for um whatever. Like, racism. It's like, bro, who fucking cares? 
it's like cartoon. I don't know. But I hate people who look for meaning and shit that really just does not need to fucking like happen. Of Rudeus from the currently airing anime masterpiece Mushoku Tensei. In vague terms, the degenerate is a character in an anime who has no restraint on their libido. The moment an attractive girl comes on screen or is introduced for the first time, the degenerate is there to sing their praises. Whether it's her personality, bosom, or any other attractive... What the fuck is that, bro? Quality, the degenerate. What the fuck? Hold up. Bro, what the fuck are those knees? <laughs> that looks like a fucking skull. Bruh. The degenerate will be sure to give the new character an in-depth review, naturally on a scale of how aroused they are. If ever our party goes to, say, a hot springs, you can bet your ass the degenerate will be there to organize or provoke a mission to peep on the girls. While our Hell yeah, dude. Protagonists are busy trying to save the world, the degenerate is busy finding ways to get the girls into skimpy outfits. Of course, we don't actually need characters like this in an anime to have fan service. All it takes. Bruh. Takes is a shower scene or odd camera angle every so often. So, what exactly are the potential merits and downsides of degenerate characters? In general, I think the phenomena can be summed up in this one clip. In it, we have Roxy, a legal loli who's teaching magic to the son of. A wealthy noble. During the anime, this bratty student gets hold of a well-crafted figure of Roxy and proceeds to run his tongue all over it. Naturally, Roxy's reaction is of pure shock and bewilderment. That face of hers, right there, is what I think the degenerates are all about. In <laughs> is it what you think or what you fucking know? In other words, diegetic fan service. I'm coining this term for myself right now, so I don't think you'll find it on Google, but perhaps you've heard of diegetic music as a comparison. A lot of times in film, music just plays in the background to paint the mood of a scene. Obviously, this music isn't literally part of the scene itself, it's just there for the audience watching. When Rocky Balboa is training for his boxing matches, he's not literally listening to his own theme song. Sometimes, however, a character will do something like turn on a radio or put on headphones, and we get to hear what they're hearing. In film theory, this is called diegetic sound. As it turns out, this logic can also apply to fan service. Many fan service moments in anime aren't narratively contextual. Dualized at all. Instead, a scene might just happen to take place. Oh shit, I fucked up my headphones. One second, guys. I gotta. Alright, I think it's good now. In a shower, bathhouse, locker room, or beach. We as an audience are getting to see the character. What the fuck is this shit? Dude, who is watching this crap? Like, how sad do you have to be? Like, this is what you spend your time watching. Characters in this environment, but they have no idea they're being watched. It's pure voyeurism, like we're a fly on the wall. Anime figures are the exact same way. They just kind of exist. They don't react. They just sit there for us to look at and enjoy however we want. That said, what would your waifu think about your idolizing of them? What would they do? What the fuck is this shit? They do if they could see your figure collection, your dojins, your fan art. Oh, my figure collection. Art? Your first reaction might be to panic. Oh, shit! But no, their first reaction would be to call the fucking cops. Oh, my God, bro. This is nasty. Oh, my God, bro. 
Yeah, like, oh my god, bro, what if your waifu was real and she got teleported into your room filled with a bunch of naked figures of her? Like, what the fuck, bro? I'd grab the fucking Glock and take my chances with the court. <laughs> Shit. Raging Boar with the two, I'm currently in the process of changing my profile picture. What two? The Butch is toxic with the two. Can we watch the online game? We're probably not tonight, man. Santi with the tier one membership. Appreciate it, man. Santa the Mammoth with the two. It's not assault. It's fan service. Weebs. Yeah, bro. And she's a, a legal lolly, bro. Even though she looks like she's seven. I, I, I promise she's not, bro. She's 24. Zier but the five. There's a video where Linus swaps his wife's car with another. To see if she would notice. Really? Damn. I wish somebody would do that to me, but with like a fucking Lambo or some bullshit. God Howard with the two. I have U Generations account, so yes, it's my new. Yeah, I had a feeling, you know, it makes sense. I mean, God Howard, this type of stuff does typically come from you. Doom Boom with the five. Two D is not better than three D. By Degenerosity, seven minutes will be a funny addition to this video. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm thinking this is enough anime for tonight, man. I don't really want to. Stay up till 5 a.m. Watch an anime shit. Midnight Mawa with the two. Oh my god, he needs to fucking stop saying anime. God, yeah. It's cringy. Bro, it's like all the fucking weebs that refuse to use like the English name of an anime. They'll like try to say it in the fucking Japanese and it just sounds so fucking stupid. 2023 Perfect Dark with the five. Your anime waifu will have the same reaction as any other girl if they were real. Disgust. Very fucking true. <laughs> that's the thing. That's what I think is so fucking funny about weebs. They're like, bro, if this anime girl was real, I would totally fucking date her. It's like, first off, let's pause for a second. Your ass already can't speak to real fucking girls. And even if you can, they don't have any interest in you already. So what makes you think that like what you consider to be the like peak or the embodiment of like human perfection. If that thing was real, they would want to talk to you first and foremost. No, if a real girl doesn't want to talk to you, a fucking anime girl is not going to want to talk to you if they were real. And second, y'all are forgetting about the most basic fucking thing. None of y'all's fucking speak Japanese. There's no such thing as subtitles in real life. Like, come on now. Come on. It's just, it's hilarious to me. I don't know. Sam the Madman with the two. He belongs six feet underground, plain and simple. I mean, after that fucking defense of, like, child porn and anime, then, yeah, I, I'd have a hard time arguing with that one. Then you start to realize there are people out there who actually want to see that reaction. They want to see how a girl responds to being the subject of fan service, whether it be embarrassment, anger, or intrigue. Again, I'm not here to judge, but it's obvious that such reactions serve as unique flavors of fan service. It customizes the entire appeal. In order for this to happen, though, the fan service needs to be diegetic. The looting has to happen within the actual story of the anime. Therefore, we have degenerate characters who stir up trouble for both their and our enjoyment. While there are tons of these characters in anime, they too come up in different flavors. If you look them up on TV tropes, you'll find degenerates classified as lovable sex maniacs, Casanova wannabes, dirty kids, and chivalrous perverts. For the sake of this video, however... Yeah, man, I love me some anime with some quote-unquote dirty kids. Jesus fuck, man. I want to focus on two distinct types. Degenerates who are meant to be pathetic, and ones who are meant to be humorous. There is no difference. In other words, degenerates are either likable or unlikable. Let's start with the unlikable ones. By far the most iconic modern degenerate is most definitely Mineta from My Hero Academia. My Pedophile Academia? Love that show, man. He's a coward, he's unattractive, he's disrespectful, and he's just overall annoying. He fits all the traits of a degenerate. When a new He fits all the traits of a My Hero Academia fan girl is introduced, he idolizes their breasts. He'll climb the wall of a hot spring to see the girls on the other side. If I recall, he's even he'll Yo, climb the wall of a hot spring to see the girls on the Hell yeah, dude. 
14 year old titties hell yeah i love anime god fucking damn bro the other side if i recall he's even responsible for getting the girls to wear cheerleader outfits during the ua tournament arc i suppose there are moments where he's mildly redeemable as a hero but as a member of the class none of the girls like him and he comes off as a total creeper Lesser known, but perhaps even more creepy, is Tadamoto Ijuin from the ecchi anime Green Green. He's an overweight guy with a gluttonous personality who's only ex They really fucking animated a dude jerking his fucking meat? Anime Green Green. He's an overweight guy with a gluttonous personality who Oh my god. Whose only experience with women is marked by the multiple calluses on his hand from fapping. Not that fapping is bad, mind you, but he's the kind of guy- Nah, dude, we all gotta get on that no-fap lifestyle so we can unlock, like, the full potential of our brain. Come on, man, I watched a YouTube video on it, it's gotta be true, right? Who rallies all the students of his all-boys school to look upon a bus full of female students like fresh meat. Then, of course, our obligatory fate example would be Blackbeard, though surprisingly he's not as bad as the other two. While in legend he's an intimidating pirate captain, Fate's Edward Teach is far more concerned about capturing lolis and seducing his own allies than I So he's a fucking pedophile. Damn. They did our boy Blackbeard dirty. Actually winning any battles. He's one of those guys the other servants are glad to see die so they don't have to put up with his antics any longer. Yeah, you know, chasing after like literal fucking children. Yeah, I wouldn't really consider that antics. Kill the pedo. For all three of these unlikable degenerates, I suppose there is some joy to be had at their expense. But usually, they're so creepy that watching them is more painful and cringeworthy than entertaining. Like seriously, who are they supposed to appeal to? Who actually wants them around? I love fan service as much as the next guy, perhaps even more so. But why do these characters have to make it feel so sleazy? Personally, I think the distinction is less about their obsession with the female form and more about how they hardly recognize women as people at all. As a result, they don't try to form genuine human relationships and seem to have given up hope of ever doing so. This sends a contradicting message, especially for ecchi anime. Emperor Tiberius would be so proud. He really would. How are we supposed to enjoy the fan service when it's constantly being associated with such irksome people? It's almost like the anime is saying that if we like what we see, we're just as bad as them. Um, I think if you took it that way, you would not be too far off. Maybe the anime's creator is equally irredeemable and doesn't perceive their characters as irksome to begin with. I can't say I have the answers, but I do have some. Overall, the role of the unlikable degenerate is to serve as a fall guy. A sacrifice that takes the blame for all the sketchy parts of the fan service. After all, there's a clear distinction between enjoying something and approving of how it came to be. For instance, imagine you're walking down the street one day and some perv starts flipping up women's skirts, and you wind up getting a glance at a pretty girl's underwear. You didn't Ooh. flip the skirt. You don't condone such disrespectful behavior. That remains true even if you admit that, deep down, you liked what you saw. There might be some shame or guilt associated with that feeling, but that goes. Yeah, man. Whenever I think about the times that, you know, I've seen a woman in real life, I've had shame and guilt. Damn, man. <laughs> what the fuck is this shit, bro? <laughs> what the fuck do you mean shame and guilt? The only shame and guilt you should feel is that you're jerking off the fucking cartoons, my dude goes away when we're talking about fiction. We can watch the degenerate do something pervy, enjoy the experience, but ultimately let the degenerate- Hell yeah, dude. Gotta love them underage fucking, you know, middle schoolers or whatever the fuck they are. High schoolers. Damn, I love anime, bro. Receive all the punishment. My pedo academia is like literally the worst fucking example of this shit I've ever seen. For non ecchi anime, such characters serve to signal incoming fan service, thereby keeping it separate from the larger narrative. My Hero Academia can remain focused on its serious story of young heroes fighting villains, with all the fan service being bundled into bizarre scenes involving Mineta. When he shows up, we know things are going to get lewd. It serves as a scapegoat for fans who don't care about the fan service. 
They can be all. I love My Hero Academia. I just hate Mineta. Even though it's obviously the creator's fault and not the characters. Most importantly, however, I feel like unlikable degenerates play the Fall Guy not just for the show itself, but for the sake of its more virtuous characters. Deku, for instance, is supposed to be a truly virtuous kid who jumps in to save the weak, even if- Bro, this soft ass- Dude, I fucking hate this show. It is so fucking garbage. Like, I watched like five episodes of this crap. This motherfucker had tears flowing from his eyes for like 90% of it. He's literally the fucking stereotypical power of friendship, crying pussy bullshit. Like, oh my god, bro, the more I cry, the more powerful I get. Like, oh my god, I fucking hate that shit. My hero is, like, literally the worst parts of Naruto turned into, like, a full-length series. Like, it's like they took the worst fucking filler episodes of Naruto and said, hey, let's base an entire series off of this shit, but at the same time make it a cringy fucking Marvel clone. <laughs> and then add in some fucking pedo bait. For good measure, and let's call it a day. Oh my god, bruh. I don't know. I don't understand how anybody likes this shit. But then again, there's a lot of shit that I don't understand why people like. So, let's see. I love gaming with the two. I have the right to a key. A Lambo with a Weaver. Oh shit, man. I think I'm going to pass on that Lambo. Brandon Donahue with the two quantum TV threatened mischief about this new video. Yeah, that's not surprising. Quantum TV loves to throw out threats. And if he himself is weak, that virtue is what makes him worthy of All Might's quirk. Of course, Deku is still interested in women. There are times when he's all flustered seeing a girl accidentally change or whatever, but he... Oh my god remains humble, never escalating the incident further. Deku can't be the catalyst for the fan service. It would ruin his goody two shoes reputation. And also the you know role of the cuck MC that literally has like females throwing themselves at him but never fucking does shit. Mineta allows the show to get his rather wonderful anime stereotype raunchy as fans want without having Deku take the hit. It's one of those best of both worlds situations. Now, like I Dude, I would have... That was the thing... Alright, so let's talk about Naruto, for example. Like, bro, that was why the original season of... Like, ser I guess not series... Or, mm, season, series, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Like, the original Naruto, like, was really good. Is because Naruto wasn't, like, this fucking, like, pull-up-his-ass, goody-two-shoes little fucker. Like, he was, like, a troublemaker and shit. Like, he was pervy as fuck. But at the end of the day, like, he would do shit to be, like, the good guy, I guess. I don't know. But that's why, like, Naruto's character worked well in the original series. But then when they did Shippuden, it was, like, he turned into, like, literally what he just fucking described with the bullshit. Like, oh, my God, I would never do anything wrong. Like, I don't know. It just kind of shows you, like, they literally took the fucking worst parts of Naruto and turned it into a TV show. I don't know, man. I fucking hate My Hero Academia, long story short. I said before, there are degenerate characters that the audience, and sometimes the other characters, actually like. They're imperfect and obviously not virtuous. Jiraiya from Naruto is one of them. But viewers enjoy watching them, and genuinely see their behavior is hilarious. Kazuma from Konosuba, for instance, is a great source of humor. He taunts people. Yeah, bro, Jiraiya is the fucking goat from Naruto. That man was a fucking living legend. People in town by stealing their panties. <laughs> so funny. In reality, that would be insanely creepy. But the tone of Konosuba plays it for laugh. This show. Dude, if you want to, like, swallow a fucking bullet faster than you intended, watch, like, two episodes and you'll want to fucking hang yourself from the ceiling. This shit is, like, literal fucking ass. It's worse than ass, but this is, like, literally one of the worst fucking things I've ever watched in my entire life. I watched this with my friend like we were in a fucking Xbox party watching this shit together and oh my god it was fucking awful then there's Miroku from Inuyasha in the story he approaches pretty much any young woman he sees and asks her to bear his children 
Once he has his sights set on Sango, he gropes her butt in exchange for a slap in the face. It's seen by fans and the creators itself as a humorous repeating gag, despite how inappropriate it would be in real life. Perhaps my favorite degenerate character is Kintaro Oe from the anime Golden Boy. He's a strange guy who travels Japan looking for part-time jobs, pretty much always going for ones where he can be with sexy co-workers. He's a total goofball with a big heart and an even bigger libido. He screams poems about his passion for women. From the velvety recesses hidden beneath those clinging black leather restraints, he cried to me! Why does he sound like he has fucking autism? The beast! The beast! He makes a fool. Dude, that literally sounds like somebody's like autistic fucking rant. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god, bro. Pod had invested with the five, bro. Just found out that a special needs kid that works with my shift was telling people that he was almost raped by his four-year-old niece. What the fuck, dude? Jesus Christ. Fool of himself to get closer to them. <laughs> so, how do you like my swimming? And people will still defend fucking dubs. He'll even risk his own life to see just a little more TNA. <laughs> Seriously, if you haven't watched this anime, it's a friggin' classic, especially for its English dub. I've watched it dozens of times and still. What the fuck? They'll find it hilarious. Now, of course, humor is subjective. Some people can't take a joke, just as some jokes just aren't that funny. The mileage is going to vary from person to person, but I do think there's a certain reason these guys are more likable than the earlier examples. For one, they're more conventionally attractive. Even Kazuma, who's supposed to be a pathetic hikikomori, is drawn similar to the average anime protagonist. Miroku, well, let's just say many female fans had a thing for him. Some would certainly call him hot. Kintaro is pretty average looking, but he displays a range of emotions that one can find charming. Another major factor is context. In Konosuba, every character has a huge personality flaw. Heck, Darkness gets more lewd than him with her masochism. This makes Kazuma seem more normal when contrasted with his own party. Miroku, while not the most polite about it, does have a reason to seek a woman. If he wants to be freed from his wind tunnel, he must defeat Naraku. But if he can't do it in his lifetime, he'll need to pass on the mission to his child. In Golden Boy, some of the women he ludes are technically looting themselves, or manipulating him. Lastly, these degenerates aren't wholly bad people. Kazuma does have compassion for his party members. Despite groping her, it's obvious that Miroku Bro, when you have to start off a sentence with the words, despite groping her, what in the actual fuck, dude? Who truly cares about Sango's well-being. If he were actually hurting her, he'd stop. In Golden Boy, Kintaro pretty much always does more good than harm. When he's not screaming about Sea Base or his slick wild beast, he's learning from and listening to his co-workers, using his experience to better their lives. All of them are lovable idiots we can't dare officially endorse, but that doesn't stop us from finding merit in their antics. In such cases, the degenerate's behavior is genuinely seen as a joke. Sango doesn't hate Miroku for feeling her up. She could genuinely stop him if she truly wanted. If anything, Kazuma being a panty thief makes him fit in with his show's eccentric cast. Oftentimes, Kintaro knows his behavior is going to earn him an ass-kicking, but that doesn't stop him. The wild eyes of a beast suck it to me! <gasps> and ultimately, the girls wind up wanting him back in spite of this perversion. It's comparable to how friends behave when they insult each other. They're just kidding around. It's the kind of thing you can only get away with when the relationship is close. At the very least, it seems that the degenerates and their looted women have more or less come to an understanding by living out a very politically incorrect relationship. This is not to say that women should ever have to feel that way about a degenerate in reality. 
Rather, it's a testament to the fact that different people have different boundaries. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my, dude, this video fucking is so cringe. Like, we're talking about fucking cartoons, bro. And this dude's doing like an in-depth psychological analysis of this shit. Now, here's where Mushoku Tensei comes in. It's an isekai about a 40-year-old obese shut-in who gets killed by a truck and is reborn. <laughs> into a fantasy world, giving him another chance at life as a boy named Rudius. In some ways, he's genuinely unlikable. Seriously, when he gets kicked out of his apartment, he's fapping to CP, not Lolico. No wonder why people like the show. On, but what I presume is the genuine article. Even the bad guys who come to kick his ass and van- Well, I mean, depending on when this um, anime was created, I, that may have still been legal back in Japan, so I don't know. Like, that's the thing, man. He, he could have been completely within the bounds of the Japanese law at the time. When did this show come out? Because what, was, what year was it? 2014, where they officially banned CP? And then you had a one-year grace period until you had to delete it off your car like computers and shit. So, you know, maybe it was still legal in Japan back in the day. You never know. Analyze his stuff, think he's disgusting after seeing his computer monitor. While it's possible to explain his behavior, we cannot simply excuse it. That said, the show... Yet they base their entire fucking show off of a literal fucking pedophile. What in the actual fuck, man? ...asks us to forgive him. It's a redemption story in many ways. See, he was dealt a sh... No, just fucking smother his ass in the fucking cradle. ...shitty hand during his first go-around at life. His parents... Oh, he was dealt a shitty hand, bro. So what do you do? Oh, dude, fuck this shit. ...died when he was a child. And all throughout his school years, he was bullied by his classmates. Like Ty so he decides to look up videos of kids getting sexually ass Wait, what the fuck? Dude, fuck this shit. Oh my god, these people are fucking sick in the head for watching this type of stuff. ...had to offense and made fun of for his limp penis. It's really awful shit. This pressured him into a life of solitude, where he surrounded himself with games and visual novels. It was a complete- And apparently child fucking porn. Complete escape from reality. And while I personally love escapism, there are healthy and unhealthy ways to go about it. In his case, he completely disassociated from reality. After all, what reverence did he owe a world that treated him like crap? It's likely that disassociation that led him to discovering CP. I feel like if he- <laughs> So it's everybody else's fault? Oh my god. He actually had to confront a child? To acknowledge how awful making that content truly is, he would never have been involved. Oh my god, he's defending this shit. You know, I can understand. You know, he probably wouldn't condone the production of it, but it's he just enjoys beating his fucking meat vigorously. Bro, what is this shit? Is this like some fucking defense of child porn viewers? What the fuck, man? Oh my god. Instead, real kids just blended into the various pixels on his computer screen, where he could take them- Oh, it's just pixels, guys. It's just pixels, right? ...at face value and ignore their consequence. Even so, he's not a monster who's transcended beyond- Yes, he fucking is. Anyone who does that type of shit belongs in a fucking hole in the ground. With six feet of dirt covering their ass. Fuck that shit. What the fuck, bro? ...on hope of redemption. He hasn't directly violated people, and he certainly... Oh, no, he just consumed the content, which then, you know, literally makes it so people want to create more of it. Are you fucking kidding me? You're actually, like, defending this shit. ...not a murderer. I say this... He's worse than a fucking murderer. ...because he still... I can understand someone wanting to kill someone, but someone doing that type of shit to a kid? Fuck off. What type of bullshit? Did this dude really just... Oh my god, bro. This guy's fucking sick. ...has empathy. 
After getting forcibly evicted, one of the first things we see him do is try to save some random strangers from a swerve. Yeah, probably so he can fucking grope her. <laughs> so. Swerving truck in the rain. As pathetic and broken as he is, he still has compassion. Giving him a second chance at life proves this. He's still a degenerate, a grown adult in the body of a kid. This lets him get away with things that he could never do otherwise. Even so, his new life comes with a kind and loving family that nurtures him. He learns to overcome his fear of leaving home, and relearns how to interact with others. This propels his adventure forward, leading to an isekai that is both an amazing story and brilliant production values. Oh my god, the amazing story of a literal fucking pedophile. God, I love it. Of course, Rudius is still a degenerate, but is he the kind we find funny? No, he's a fucking pedophile, you sick piece of shit. Or the kind we find creepy? Well, both, depending on the viewer. Uh no. If it's depending on the viewer that you don't think... Bro, I'm gonna say this right now. Anyone who does not think pedophilia <laughs> is fucking creepy and disgusting, if you don't believe in that type of shit, you don't belong on this planet. What in the fuck? I certainly don't think his degeneracy after being reborn is ever overtly harmful. And as a viewer, I don't mind seeing the fruits of his labor, at least when it comes to the adult characters, like his mom, the maid, or this lovely beast woman. The idea of a baby looting a grown woman is pretty damn funny due to its sheer absurdity. I mean, look at that, it's ridiculous. That said, even if you find him completely despicable, there's no denying the positive impact he makes on people's lives. This new world is much kinder to him, which lets him- So was the person who made this shit's message like, Hey guys, even though I got caught watching child porn, I'm not a bad guy. Is that what the author is trying to project here? Like, is that- <laughs> What the fuck? Oh my god. Tim thrive where our reality failed him. That's what makes this anime so fascinating. It's not telling us how we should There is nothing fascinating about this shit. Think we can find that answer for ourselves. Yeah, it makes sense he's a fucking furry as well, man. Furry and pedophilia tend to line up pretty frequently. And the fact that it's not cut and dry morally makes it all the better. If you're not already watching Mushoku Tensei, I highly recommend you give it a shot. The last thing I want to mm -hmm. mention before wrap- Bro, he highly recommends watching the show about a literal fucking pedophile redeeming himself oh my god bro oh my god wrapping up this video is that there are indeed female degenerates too there are girls like katsuragi who obsessively grope other women there are also fujoshi literally named a rotten girl in the same way that men might lust after anime girls fujoshi often fetishize men typically effeminate men lusting over fantasies of their gay relationships Oh, oh my God, bro. Two nukes was not enough. These degenerate women do the same thing as their male counterparts, vocalizing and perpetuating the fan service within an anime. Naturally, I do think that there are some nuanced differences, mainly in how men and women are fetishized for different reasons, but the logic still holds true. With that, I want to bring this discussion to you. First off, can you name any degenerates that you're more familiar with? Do you think you think they're the likable or despicable kind? Despicable. Do you ever find yourself rooting for or condemning no. them? And lastly, can you appreciate these kinds of characters? Or do you no. Do you wish they never existed? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this channel, help. Oh my God, bro. This dude really was defending a fucking literal pedophile. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> fucking god. Oh.
Are the comments on? Let's see if anybody mentioned that shit. Yo, here we go. We got another pedophile apologist right here. Um, I'll admit Rudius is pretty pervy, but I let him slide since he's actually trying to be better or trying to better himself from his past life. What a fucking sick piece of shit. Oh my God, dude. You're right, Rudius was watching CP in a controversial chapter of the web novel. It actually explains how he made it when his niece... Oh my fucking god, dude. Hold, it's even worse. Let's defend a dude who literally made the shit in the first place. Just trying to see if there's anybody else. I'm not seeing anything. Dude, this shit's so fucking nasty. Like, this is the second time he's, like, defended pedophilia in anime and shit. Like, the first time it was like, oh, it's just cartoons, guys. You know, there's not a big deal in watching a literal fucking... I'm, I don't even want to fucking get into it, bro. Oh. Nasty. Absolutely fucking nasty. But yeah, let's watch this just for um the giggles. <laughs> Our staff have almost become like mini celebrities. <laughs> These are the people watching this shit. I have no idea what any of this stuff is, but it looks like great fun. Meet Hideki Nugent. Proud owner of this manga store in Glasgow. Manga is a type of Japanese comic. With spin-offs into merchandise and film and television, it's an industry worth billions globally. <laughs> I used to work in the games industry where I was a graphic designer. Unfortunately, that company went bust and I went to the job center. What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> oh, we need bullying. A poster on the wall and it said, we can help you start your own business if you come up with the idea. They gave me a year of training and it's become what it has become today after about 12 years of work. In that time, Nugent has graduated from bedroom to market stall, and now a manga empire of two shops. Yeah, a real empire there. Two shops. So let's see. Turn it to full with the five. I'm a likable pervert, but I write a lot of... Wait, I'm a likable pervert, but I write a lot of girls' checks and been in a lot of... Wait, what the fuck? I mean, fair enough, man. I don't really know what you mean by that, but fair enough. Dazzles with the two, this guy probably subs to Vosh. Maybe, you know? They might have a lot in common. Smoke show with the two, this dude is officially worse than Quantum TV. Ban him too? I don't know, man. Uh, you know, I think defending pedophilia is probably a little bit worse. Yeah, we will go for it. Uncodified horror with the 10 months of tier one. We need Jesus after this. Sure. Why 
With a successful one established in Birmingham, he was able to open a new one in Glasgow this April. We were walking past and my daughter dragged me into the shop. As well as locals, the shop attracts people. Holy fuck. Pilgrims from further afield. I'm from China. Hi. I can hear because I love this Pikachu. <laughs> they didn't even know how to fucking spell Pikachu, bro. Oh my god. I'm from China. Hi. I can hear because I love this Pikachu. But for diehard local fans like these, the shop. <laughs> what the fuck? They're playing Connect Four fucking shirtless. Oh my god. There's also a place to hang out. It's creative, it's passionate, it's got everything. I love it. It allows you to think outside the box. So it does. When we applied for Glasgow, we had 819 people apply for the job, and they were all anime fans. This sense of community and belonging might help to explain why the shop attracts a very different kind of person. My <laughs> here we go. Son's autistic and we'll absolutely love it in here. We live two and a half hours away, but we're going to have to come back by train. But lots of his friends like it and it, it sort of brings him together, like as a community type thing. It's kind of like his safe place, if you will. If he's having a bad day, it calms him right down. Now meet Brendan Doig. Appeal to autistic people. Is everything. <laughs> here we go. It's fairly bombastic and dramatic. There's no subtlety in manga, really. Even something about people that's just people talking is drawn in such a way that it's huge. I, I'm quite good at knowing. <laughs> you just need to be aware of the telltale signs of it. Whether that's right, you can you can sniff out the artists when they walk in the door. That it's putting their hands together like this in front of something they really like. That's usually a sign. There's no middle ground. You either really really love something. So if you put your hands together, it's in front of something you really like. That's a red flag for autism right there, guys. You know, if you ever see somebody cross their hands in public, fucking autistic, I'm telling you. This guy is a pro. He knows how to smell out those autistic people. Something and that's your end on be all that. He's like a bloodhound for fucking autism. That's your day. And there's other things that you hate. And that's just the way it is. It's not really hate. You just don't care. You don't have any opinion on it. But when you get those people, it's really fun for us because that's kind of where we are on the, on the, the realm of kind of loving this stuff. Aware that the exhibitionism of the staff might put off some autistic people, the shop has devised a strategy to get around this. <laughs> they have a dedicated autism. Oh my god. We've come there up we with Coco's Calm Tuesday. So Coco Monkey is our mascot and we have a picture of him meditating. Tuesday will be the day that we recommend our customers to come who want a much more calmer environment. So we'll turn the music down and we'll wind down our staff a little bit as well. Just think about that guys for a second, okay? They literally have a dedicated day of the week <laughs> to fucking artists. What the fuck? Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> like, I just. You cannot make this shit up. They literally have Autism Day every single Tuesday. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, man, I don't know. This video is such a fucking classic. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. <sighs> uh. Bruh, I don't know. It's a it's a strange world we live in. Yikes. Reveals his inspirations. Uh oh. I don't know, man. <clears throat> that video, like how old is it? 
eight no not eight years fuck six years at this point still holds up to this day it's just a quality ass piece of youtube content uh i don't know guys i think i'm gonna hop off it is late